Yeah, uh, we're pretty excited with spring ball starting today. I think it's uh, we had a good off season to this point. Um, our team has worked really hard and trying to improve on some of the things that we didn't do as well as we should have last year. Uh, it's always fun this time of year. It's a little different this time of year because there's so much football still going on. Usually there's no football and uh, we totally get involved with basketball and our basketball teams, the most exciting thing is our basketball team's playing so good right now. So, you know, Coach Dutch and them are probably going to do what they always do and end up in the NCAA tournament, I hope. We're sure hoping that way. But we're excited that we're starting spring ball, even though I can watch football on TV every day of the week, it seems like. Can you talk about the challenges of putting a spread formation in? And is the big challenge for the quarterback to learn it or the wide receivers to learn routes? How different is this going to be? Uh, there's several reasons. You'll, you'll see a lot more uh, spread formations this spring than you have in the past. You'll see the quarterback a lot more in the shotgun than you have in the past. And to be truthful, it's really going to be easier on the quarterback than anything we've done. Uh, because if you look at all of our quarterbacks that we have here now, every one of them came out of a spread system. So they're used to, we have to teach them how to take a snap from center rather than taking the shotgun snap because they've been doing that since they were 12 years old or maybe even earlier than that in Pop Warner they were taking. Um, the running plays that we're going to put in, the running plays are exactly the same running plays. The blocking schemes are exactly the same blocking schemes. Uh, but when you put one more wide receiver out there, one of the defenders usually goes out there to cover them. And that makes the numbers at the line of scrimmage different and probably makes it a little bit easier on the offensive lineman. So in reality, it'll be easier on the quarterbacks than what we've tried to teach them in the past. Why implement it now? Why not a year ago? Or why, not, why not a year from now? There's no reason to change things as long as you're being successful. The worst thing to do is to try to make problems when there weren't any. Well, we didn't play as well as we wanted to or we should have last year. Uh, so when you go into the evaluation of your program, you look at everything in your program and decide what's going to help your players perform better. My decision was if the quarterbacks are more comfortable in the shotgun because that's what they've done all their lives, let's put them in the shotgun. And you and I have talked, but we're, we're not changing our philosophy now. We're just lining up in different formations. We're not, we're not changing what we're going to do. We're going to say, run the same running plays, and if we can run it, we're going to run it and we're going to use play action pass. I just think it makes it easier on the quarterback, especially the quarterback, but it also makes it easier on the offensive lineman when you don't have as many people close to the line of scrimmage. There's less chance of blocking mistakes. How do you think with your explosiveness at running back, you're going to be able to bust more chunk plays because the defenses will be spread out more and they won't load the box? Well, I don't, it depends on how well, how well we throw the ball. That you, just because you're in a spread formation doesn't mean you can't stack the box for the running game. It just puts you in a lot more one-on-one -on -one situations, DBs against wide receivers. But you can still put enough guys in there to make it hard to run the ball. Um, now, if we throw the ball well enough in one-on-one -on -one situations, now they have to start spreading people out and playing more zone coverages, which may, maybe gives you a little, little advantage in the running game. Now, here, here we go again. Now, I, I think that probably some of our running backs are disappointed that we're doing this because one of the reasons they came here is so they could be the tailback in the I formation. But every one of them was in the spread in high school. So they have a lot more experience running the ball from a spread formation in the pistol formation or the offset back formation. They have a lot more experience doing that than they do the I formation because no high schools run the I formation anymore. Or very few. There's probably a couple that still do, but there's very few of them that do. How do you think Coach Horton will adjust just having to teach the spread? Coach Horton's a very experienced, really good football coach. He can adjust. To, all it is is change of formations. It's not a change of our system. Rocky, what's 
you seem to have a pretty good smile on your face uh, as you've looked at your changes here and in as you are trying to enable your players to be more successful. Is that what you're expecting? Is well, I, I think that we, uh, we're trying to give our players a better chance of success. But, but at the same time, we're trying to uh, make it easier on them so that we can play at a certain physical level that we didn't play at last year. We're trying to get our edge back. <laughs> that's what that's what's strange about this year because usually when you're going to be in spring practice you know the only football that's going on is the colleges in spring practice but now you got the all the extra pro leagues you know i i think we had a arena game last night right in san diego didn't we have arena game 60 68 to 48 or something i, I don't know what the score was something like that and then you can flip on tv on saturday and sunday and watch the AAF, you know, and it's fun to watch the San Diego team because they have eight or nine guys that are former Aztecs on that team. That's fun to watch. So it's not the, it's not the same feel for spring practice that it normally is because it's not like football has gone away. Football has continued. Do you find yourself having to restrict your uh, TV viewing? There's so much football that you're... No, no. I, in fact, I only, I only watch uh, the San Diego team because I want to see how our guys are doing. You watch me lacrosse? <laughs> no, I know, it, but I, I, I do read the newspaper every day, so I know we have a professional lacrosse team, and we also have a professional rugby team, right? Yeah. I haven't been to any of those games. And then we got a really good hockey team. I haven't been to any of those games yet either. You know, those aren't on TV, but they're right down the road. I should go. He came out of the spread system, yes. Uh, we thought he was a, a talented guy that can run with the ball well and still throws it pretty well. We thought he was a really good competitor. Uh, obviously, when you lead your team to the junior college championship, you got to be a pretty good you, – you have to have a pretty good quarterback. Uh, and we, we have confidence in Ryan Agnew, but we wanted some depth there and we wanted some competition. And the competition that he, uh, Ryan, would have had would have been really, really young. Well, now we've added a more mature kid into the competition level, which is good for all of them. You still think you'll look for a graduate transfer after spring? We, we still have our eyes out there for a couple positions where maybe a graduate transfer would fit in. D-line, O-line, corner, quarterback. I, I never know. I would guess it would go to the fall because that's my personality. <laughs> What's this first week of spring ball going to be like? Are you guys going to ease into it or just get right into it? Well, it's very disappointing because I'd like to go out there in full pads today and scrimmage. Uh, but the NCAA has rules that make you ease into it. That's because they're not football coaches making those rules. Um, we can only be in helmets and shorts and shirts for the first two days of practice. The third day of practice, we're allowed to go in shells, helmets and shoulder pads, but not full pads. We can't go in full pads till the fourth practice of spring ball. And then there's some other rules in there that we can only go live 20% of the time in spring practice. Uh, in our situation, I'd like to go live 100, go full pads 100% of the time and live 100% of the time. But they, the rules are made to prevent people like me from getting what we want, I guess. Rocky, do you feel the NCAA has gone soft? <laughs> I think the, uh, for player safety, I think those rules are probably pretty good rules. Keep them from being abused by a coach like me, you know. Do the defensive guys like it, though, or don't like it? I mean. No, I mean, it's hard to play. It's really hard to play defense when, when you don't have pads on. Where offense can actually work on timing, uh, assignments, 
they can do drills that, that help an offense a lot more than no pads help a defense. Now, that's probably on, by design, too, because the game has changed over the last 20 years where they're trying to get more offense out there because I think fans like to watch offense. So they're always trying to get where people score more points. I mean, I thought the Super Bowl was a great game, but all I hear is about what a boring game it was. I thought it was a great game. It was a great football game. But all I hear from everybody else is how boring the Super Bowl was. And that's because they didn't score 50 points. The defenses actually played good. What's wrong with watching a defensive game? But I'm not the one buy paying for the TV or buying tickets either. <laughs> I think the most concern on our football team is the D-line. We're, we're very, very young, and very few of them have played any. Um, there's some young talent, but, you know, that, that's a position. The closer you get to the line of scrimmage, the more mature you have to be. Would you say Miles is probably your most experienced? Well, he's, he's the only senior we've got. Mm -hmm. The only other one that's played uh, – we have a freshman that played quite a bit last year, Banks. And Connor Mitchell played some last year. But we've got three or four of them that will play a lot next year. They didn't play at all this year. Does it bring you a little bit more ease just knowing that Brady is kind of manning that position? I think, that, I think Brady's the best D-line coach I've ever been around. So I told him they were really, really young when he decided to take the job. And he said, OK, that's fine until today. And then he said, you know, we got a long way to go. I said, I told you that when I hired you. <laughs> what makes him, you say, best you've ever seen at that position, what makes him so good at that? Well, I, you know, I've only, I've only coached with so many D-line coaches. And I think he absolutely knows the techniques that are required to play that position. He knows the mentality that is required to play at that position. And he relates or – Maybe not relate. He is really good at teaching young players how to do things the right way. Do you have a certain motivational style, too, that somehow gets more out of guys? No, I think he's just a very enthusiastic coach. And enthusiastic enthusiasm carries over. But every enthusiastic coach has a different way of going about it. Some of us have to watch our language a lot more than we used to. Uh, we haven't slotted him yet. He's going to start out at right tackle, but he could play anywhere on the front. I, I think that we have some veteran offensive linemen. Uh, one of them is injured, probably won't go through spring practice, but uh, uh, the rest of them we're looking for the five best, and they could end up, they could end up at any place, tackle, guard, center. Uh, I got online and read about their performance at the Combine, but I don't know how to relate that. You know, I don't, I don't really know what's good and what's not good. Yeah. I saw where Ryan Pope only bench pressed or something, though. That surprised me. He didn't do any of the other drills, and I don't know if that means he's got an injury or – I mean, I, I don't know. How'd they do? Um, Ryan had the same amount of bench press as Bryce Love for context. How many? 18. He's got longer, a lot longer arms. Yeah, I think Tyler had more uh, than him, I think. I think Tyler. No, I mean, how, how did our guys do compared to the standard? So do you understand? Boards. It's because I don't understand what the standard is. They like Kahale a lot. A lot of boards like Kahale. But I don't know. Do you have a prediction of who might get drafted first? Only, only the rumors. Same rumors you got. I don't know. I'd draft Ryan Pope probably before the rest of them because he's a proven commodity. The other two are unproven. Anything else to coach? When you went back and evaluated the end of the season and the offensive line and the disappointments, would you put your finger on that was it right? Was it just the siege of injuries or was it something? Oh, I, I, think we had, I, I think we had some injuries. 
I think we had a disgruntled player that affected the rest of the group. Uh, and when he was dismissed from the team, I think that probably caused some uneasiness in the room where they didn't play up to their potential.